Good morning and welcome to worship at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis and I am the pastor here at Bread of Life. We are very glad that you have joined us in worship today. And hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks and I am the deacon at Bread of Life. Hello, my name is Wendy DeVore, and I'm the interpreter for today. Today marks the um, end of time, if you can believe it, the end of time in our church calendar. So every year in um, our tradition, in the Lutheran tradition, we celebrate and notice um, seasons of the church year. And every church year begins with Advent and Advent starts next week, next Sunday. And Advent is the time when we're waiting for uh, Christ to come. We spend time watching and waiting. And then after Advent is Christmas we celebrate that Christ comes to us here on earth. And then um, after Christmas is Epiphany, which is the season of light. And um, with each of these seasons, I should say, we change the color of the, of the days and the weeks, the decoration. So in our church building, when we're in worship together in our church building, we would change the color of the cloth on the table, for example. <clears throat> so let's see, we, we talked about Advent and then Christmas and then Epiphany. And then after Epiphany is um, a little bit of waiting. And then we have Lent. And Lent is a season of reflective time and looking at our lives and recommitting to God as we prepare for Easter. Often the color in Lent is purple. And then Easter, the color of the season is white or cream, like this color we have today, the cloth that we have today. After Easter, Easter, after the season of Easter is the holiday or the celebration of Pentecost. We celebrate the Holy Spirit coming to the earth, coming into the followers of Jesus and filling us with power and um, helping us point to God's glory. And then we have a big long season after Pentecost it's a it's goes from May until about the end of November. So it's about half of the calendar year. And that season is usually green. And as you get to the end of it, then you're approaching the end of time. And so today, the reason I'm telling you all of this is that today is a special day because it's the end of this year, our church year, because next week we start Advent, that's the beginning of our church year. And so when we're coming to the end, we celebrate that when everything is done, really done, when the world changes and is made fully new and restored again. At that time, the ways of God, the ways of Christ, Christ will reign. Christ's ways will be how we are. That's how the world will be, like Christ. And so today, the name of the day in our church year is called um, the reign of Christ. 
or sometimes it's called Christ the King Sunday. So we're marking the, the end of time. And then next week we enter into a new time. So I just want to lift that up because it is part of our tradition being um, that we're worship, worship is being led from our homes rather than from our sanctuary. We don't see all of those normal cues Um, but our worship does reflect that we follow that sort of the church calendar. So. so with all of that said, uh, let us enter into worship this morning. In the beginning and now, and forever. God, you are the maker. You are the child among us. You are the Holy Spirit breathing life into us. Please follow along, dancing together working together, belonging to each other. In the beginning and now and forever, God created the earth and all of its inhabitants, the animals, the plants, and the people. Please follow along, dancing together, working together, belonging to each other. We are all connected because God is kind and good. From the beginning until now, and it will be forever that we are united in God's creation. Please follow along. We dance with the trees of the field and the stars in the heaven. We stand with the mountains and we are steady like the seas. We worship you, God, in the beginning, now, and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. God, your affection for humanity has no limit. Write your word upon our hearts. Then we will need no scroll, no book, no script to know that you love us. Show us the power of your promise to us. You will be faithful to us, even when we are not faithful to you. Your word written on our hearts is beautiful. Thank you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our Redeemer. Jesus' body and blood.
become your new covenant with us. Amen. Before I begin sharing the Bible lesson, I'd like to give a little background information. So the main character for today is Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is a prophet. And there is another person by the name of Baruch. And I'll use this sign for Baruch and this sign for Jeremiah. And then this is the sign I'll use for a for scroll, and that's what um, what they wrote on in the ancient days. And so in this lesson, Jeremiah describes what God has asked him to do. And now I will begin the Bible lesson reading. During the fourth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was the king of Judah, and the Lord said to me, Jeremiah, since the time of Josiah was king, I have been speaking to you about Israel, Judah, and the other nations. Now go and get a scroll and write down everything I have told you. Then read it to the people of Judah. And maybe they will stop sinning when they hear what terrible things I plan for them. And if they turn to me, I will forgive them. I sent for Baruch, son of Neriah, and asked him to help me. I repeated everything the Lord had told me. And Baruch wrote it all down on a scroll. Then I said, Baruch, the, the officials refused to let me go into the Lord's temple. So you must go instead. Wait for the next holy day when the people of Judah come to the temple to pray and to go without eating. Then take this scroll to the temple and read it aloud. The Lord is furious, and if the people hear how he is going to punish them, maybe they will ask to be forgiven. So Baruch, son of Neriah, did everything Jeremiah, the prophet, told him to do. Baruch read aloud the scroll, that had the Lord's messages written on it. He read it in the Lord's temple. So King Jokayim sent Jehudi to get the scroll. Jehudi brought the scroll from the room of Elishama, the scribe. Then Jehudi read the scroll to the king and all the servants who stood around the king.
The time this happened was in the ninth month. So the king was sitting in the part of the palace used for winter. And there was a fire burning in a small fireplace in front of the king. Jehudi began to read from the scroll. But after he would read two or three columns, the king would grab the scroll. Then he would cut the columns off the scroll with a small knife and throw them into the fireplace. Finally, the whole scroll was burned in the fire. I had told Baruch what to write on that first scroll, but the king had burned it. So the Lord told me to go and get another scroll and write down everything that had been on the first one. The Lord said, the time will surely come when I will make a new agreement with the people of Israel and Judah. It will be different from the agreement I made with their ancestors when I led them out of Egypt. Although I was their God, they broke their agreement. Here is the new agreement that I, the Lord, will make with the people of Israel. I will write my laws on their hearts and minds. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. Here ends the Bible lesson reading. And now I will share my sermon. I am sure that you have witnessed a lot of new creativity that's taken place in this world and how our knowledge has grown uh, throughout time and history and how everything seems to be moving at such a fast pace. Everything's moving faster and faster. Even our mathematics, our math has seemed to become more complicated. And you know, in order to build a rocket, our math needs to be very precise in order for that to function. And now among the, the pandemic, it's amazing how scientists and the medical professions, professionals uh, have been able to work on a vaccine and to try to figure this virus out. And also we are now using Zoom for meetings, uh, church worship, and for classes. It's amazing. And now through the internet, we can connect with people throughout the world. I'm able to connect with Pastor Ruth, who is a pastor in Nigeria, in Africa. And we're able to meet and chat through FaceTime. It's just unbelievable on what we're able to do today. 
So we have seen so many changes, creativity, new ideas, and I can't even imagine what the future is going to look like. I can't imagine what new technology will be developed and what we have to then today. And we continue to create and to discover new things. Now there's one thing that I think that some that tends to get overlooked or forgotten or maybe even ignored. And I would like to talk about treasure today. So I'm going to use this sign for treasure in my sermon today. And this is the topic of my sermon. So what is a treasure? If you look it up in the dictionary, it describes a treasure as something that is valued, such as an old coin, could be stamps, but something of value from or something that's been passed down or historical value, or it's something that we cherish and that we value. And I'm sure that there are things um, that you value at home, that you keep in a very safe place. And for something that we value or treasure, we might set it out for to be viewed only, but not touched. We put it out on display. So there are different ways that we show how we treasure or value something. But, I also want you to know or remind you that God has given us a treasure. So where is it? Is it under the table? Where did God put it? Is it under our beds? Where is this treasure? What is it that he gave us that's so valuable? Well, this treasure is located deep inside your heart. But well, what's inside the heart? What did, what did God put inside of our hearts? All right, so here I have sort of like a little treasure box. Let's open it and see. Here are the treasures that God has placed within our hearts. And there's more. And there's more than what I put up here. And we have all of these treasures within us. These are all gifts from God. Now, some people might call these like um, values and uh, morals, you know, and values talk about like what we think is right or wrong, um, what God would value or treasure. So when Baroque was reading the scroll, there was one verse that said, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. 
So God has put this within our hearts and in our minds. And it's there to stay. It's there already. You don't have to seek outside of yourself to find it. It's already within us. And this is through God. And God has put this within us. So we might have overlooked this valuable treasure that exists within us. Now, you might have noticed that um, on the news, whether it's on television or through different formats, but they talk about how people are becoming more self-centered and they're, wonder they're worried and concerned about themselves. And they might be angry or hateful and they speak angrily against other people. But we know that hatred is not the answer because this can lead to division. And they have forgotten or ignored what the treasures are that already exist within their own lives. And there are other people that do listen and do show love, peace, hope, truth, respect, and honor. And love is the answer because love will lead to unity. So the good news, the good news is that our treasures never change or erode. If you look out into the world, things are rapidly changing, people change, places change, Cars even change. It's not the same kind of cars that we're driving today as before. Everything is changing all around us. The economy changes. It's just a constant state of flux. However, God never changes. God remains stable and his love is continue. God's love continues for us and it never degrades or changes or loses its value. His love is with us eternally. And this is God's gift to us. And this treasure that we have been given to by God is not meant for us to hold on for ourselves, but we need to share this treasure with others. And this leads to unity and connectedness among one another. And this is exactly what America needs right now is unity. There was a missionary who was in Africa and one man had asked him if he could borrow his Bible. And the missionary said, sure. So he gave him his Bible to borrow, to use. And when he returned it, the missionary noticed that some of the pages were missing from his Bible. And so he asked him, he said, well, I thought you would take good care of my Bible here, but why are there pages missing? And he said, oh, well, I noticed that there were other people that didn't have a Bible. So I would tear pages out and share it with them. And here, this man was wanting to share what he had, this valuable treasure, with others. Another example, uh, there was a deaf man who went to Mexico uh, on a vacation, and he was out on a tour bus. 
And then he decided that he was actually going to take the city bus, go into town on his own, on his own, and get to know the people and see things for himself. And as he was out and about, he would see men and women and children gathered together. They would sit around and talk with one another and just spend time. Children were playing, men were gathered and talking, and so were the women. And what he took away from that was that the people in this culture valued time being spent together and being connected and united. And so we can say that to be connected and united is a valuable treasure as well. So now for my question for you is, do you think God has a treasure? Does God value anything? What could be a treasure for God? And so the verse that was read in the scroll, God said, I will be their God and they will be my people. So God values and treasures us. And so it makes me wonder and to realize that we are God's special treasure. Wow. So if you think about a gardener, what does a gardener tend to treasure about their garden and how do they show that they value that garden? They show their concern and care by watering it, by protecting the plants from animals and the weather. Well, this is also true of God. God cares for us. He watches over us. He has not forgotten about us. He knows exactly what we need. This is amazing to know that we are God's treasure. God has put these treasures within our hearts. So we are God's special treasure. God values and cherishes us. God has placed these treasures and these values within us and God cherishes us even though sometimes we feel like we are so in insignificant but we are of great value to him
So when we learn of God, we shouldn't only think of God intellectually, but to place the wisdom and the learning within our hearts and to know that we are connected with God now and forever and that God is worthy of praise and glory and honor. Amen. And now prayer for others. Take three deep breaths. God, you breathe life into us. And with every breath, we thank you. Breathing in, we are grateful that you care for us. And breathing out, we commit to join you in caring for creation. You created the world with relationships. And now, relationships are fractured. Please follow along. We come to you seeking your healing. For the places and peoples torn apart by violence. Bodies and minds suffering and stress. For the earth growing, groaning under our weight. And please follow along. We come to you seeking your justice. For those whose voices have been silenced. For those whose lives have been stolen. And for those whose worth is debated. Please follow along. We come to you seeking your peace. For those who live daily under the pressure of expectations. For those whose lives are marked by hatred and division. For those who feel they are barely hanging on. Please join along. We come to you seeking your abundance. For those whose bodies need nourishment they cannot provide. For those who struggle each day for crumbs. For those who believe they are flawed, unlovable, and not enough. Please follow along. We come to you seeking your help for all who cannot breathe.
for people pressed down by the weight of racism. For people fighting disease. For people worrying about air quality. God, allow your breath of life to blow through our world, bringing fullness, hope, and joy. We ask these and all things in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. and also with you. At this time, we invite you to share a sign of God's peace with others in your life, to remind them that you, that they are God's treasure, that God holds each one of us close to God's heart. And so maybe you have to get your phone out and text somebody or send an email, or maybe you wanna write a card, a quick note to someone, um, just to remind them, you're not forgotten, and we have peace with God. Uh, during this time, this very strange time of coronavirus, um, life changes often. And sometimes we sort of feel like, oh, good, it's a little bit better. And then sometimes we feel like, oh, it's not so much better. Um, and this last week, we've had some changes here in Minnesota, um, where now we have to sort of more restrict our activities again. Um, and when that happens, it feels sort of depressing and it feels sad, especially at this time because we're approaching the holidays and Thanksgiving. And the governor and the state has asked everyone in Minnesota to stay home to not get together with other households. And so it can feel a little bit like hard to be grateful. It can feel sad to spend the day, the holiday alone, a holiday when often we get together with family or friends. We have particular traditions of things that we do. And so when all of that kind of gets upset, it can be really hard to remember those treasures that God has put in our hearts. That patience and kindness, to have hope, um, to be respectful and honor others. I think that is, it can be really, really hard to remember all of those things. And at the same time, we believe and we confess, we proclaim that God is good and generous. And that God is with us in the midst of our troubles. God is right here with us, waiting <laughs> for healing waiting for the vaccine, waiting until life gets back to something that looks more normal. That's who we believe God is. And that's why here at Bread of Life, we collect a little offering every week so that we can continue to share that message a message about God, that God treasures each one of us. 
and we share this message in American Sign Language. And that makes Bread of Life really different from most other churches. Um, there aren't very many uh, churches like us out there. And so we ask for you to join in the support, financial support, and praying for our little congregation. In the last few weeks, we've been practicing uh, being a little more brave about asking others for help. And this last week, we joined in something here in Minnesota called Give to the Max Day. And we made a couple of videos to show um, what, what makes Bread of Life so special? What makes our church different and uh, worth supporting? And so before uh, we have the prayer for the offering, we'll show a little video, um, our video that we made that's welcome to Bread of Life. So you can see what we shared with the, with the wider world as we say, we need more people to help us with this mission. We need more support. We need more money to keep doing what we've been doing in the last few years. So, um, and we share that with you because even though we all are feeling a little stuck and maybe already feeling like cabin fever, even though it's not the end of November, we're starting to feel like, oh no, someone is telling me I have to stay home. And so we share this video with you so that you can see and remember how special Bread of Life is. And then we ask that you help support the work that we're doing. So if you send a check or uh, use PayPal to make a donation and send that to Bread of Life, we really, really appreciate your generosity.
Let us pray. God, you are creator. You have given us this place where we can succeed when we work side by side with you. You call us into relationship with all things. As you have provided for us, you have asked us to join in your work. As a sign of our gratitude, we bring our offering, the fruit of our labor. When we give as you give, we are participating in your blessing of the world. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Before we go from worship, I want to make an announcement. I know this is a little bit different than what I've been doing online, but I want everybody, I want as many people to know about it as can. Um, on the afternoon of November 29th, from 2 to 4, uh, you can drive over to Bread of Life. And I'll be there, I'll have my mask on, and I will bring a bag to you. It's a little advent bag. So no contact. And you don't have to get out, no one has to go inside the building. I'll just be there and bring it. And we have enough bags for 40 households All right, so hopefully you'll get there early enough you can get one. And I wanna show you what you'll find in your bags because these are advent bags. Uh, so you can set up a little advent station in, on your table. Um, and every day do a little um, devotion. Thinking about how we wait, how we watch for God to come. All right, so you get some blue tissue paper and you can use this. You can fold it in a special way, how you want. I just fold it in a little rectangle um, because then you'll also find at the bottom of your bag, woo, you'll find five candles. And you could put your candles on your tissue paper and make a little advent wreath. Now, maybe you'll want to go outside and collect some greens to put on there. Maybe you'll want to make it look fancier than that. Whoops. But every week during Advent, we'll light another candle. Right. Oh, can you see it a little? It's too bright to show the candle is on. But every week during Advent, we'll light another candle. 
And um, so you can put it on your dining room table in the middle. And, um, and then another thing you'll find in your bag is a daily advent calendar. And there are little windows on the calendar. And you'll see there is like a number one. So every day of December, you open a door and there will be a message in there. A message reminding us about Advent, about waiting for and watching for God coming into our lives again and again. Another thing we have in there is a little devotion booklet. It's a, like a study. It's to help us be thinking about um, God with us. And how we notice, again, the goal is that we're noticing that God comes into our lives. That God is with us in our everyday events. Okay, the last thing I did is I added a couple more of these letters because as I talked about um, during the offering is we're working on asking more people to help support Bread of Life, right? And so that means each one of us needs to reach out to people that we know and not just people in the deaf community, really reach out to your families, reach out to um, your cousins and other people, um, reach out to friends in the hearing community. We made this to um, you know, help people notice what makes Bread of Life special. There's a spot for you to write a little message to each person that you send the letter. And then we just have a really big flyer that tells people a few really important things about Bread of Life. And then we ask them to help, well, to do lots of things to get involved with Bread of Life. First, to pray for our congregation, but also, and also to ask them for their financial support because we, we need more people to help support what we're doing here at Bread of Life. So next week, Sunday afternoon on November 29th, from 2 until 4 p.m., I'll be at the church building, and I'll have these little gift bags for you, little Advent bags for you, um, and so uh, this last thing I want to ask, if you know somebody who doesn't watch worship online, who doesn't have an email address, who uh, maybe isn't quite sure that, every, that this is going to happen, that you would contact someone. So maybe this week, take half an hour and contact two or three people and let them know to go and pick up their advent bag next Sunday afternoon. All right, that ends our announcement time, but it's really important. It's something we haven't done so far in the pandemic and I wanna make sure to get the word out to as many people as possible. All right, so now let us be sent out into the world. God knows us fully and God loves us fully. We are God's treasures. And God is always near to us for each one of us, just as you are right now. God loves you.
even when we make mistakes, God loves us yesterday, today, and forever. God loves you. Please follow along. Thanks be to God. Amen.